want to put up this, this picture that the U.S. Marine Corps released showing a Marine today holding an infant during an evacuation at the Kabul airport. And I'm just wondering, what do you think of how President Biden is contextualizing these harrowing images with the challenging process of leaving an unwinnable war? Well, I think he's doing the best he can. The best way to contextualize them is to do what he's done, to send in the troops, to get people out, to work with our allies to do that. You've just posted the numbers. Uh, it's really kind of a remarkable achievement, especially what's happened in the course of the past week. I think 13,000 people have come out uh, in the past week. The president is naturally uh, kind of a compassionate leader that's always been uh, uh, his brand. He, he has his heart on his sleeve, and I think he's tormented by this. But I also think he's made a very clear case that uh, staying in Afghanistan would have worse consequences than leaving Afghanistan, whether it be continued conflict, whether it be distraction of our own resources and inability to deal with other uh, threats and priorities around the world. Uh, it's very tough to tell the American people that 20 years of war have not turned out so well for us, that we did mm -hmm. not win that 20-year war. You know, David, you wrote a, a fabulous column in, in the Daily Beast, uh, Beast where you um, are wagging your finger at, at columnists and, and commentators. And I want to put up something, a, a quote from your piece of what you say, we are likely to come to see the events of the past week, not only very differently, but in the opposite light, of that depicted by many commentators. Talk that through. Well, I think a lot of commentators have focused naturally on the weak, naturally on the images. They've been harrowing images, heartbreaking images, uh, and we've gotten caught up in the moment. But I think when we have a few months or a few years on this, we're gonna recognize that something else has happened here. The president has decided to end the post 9-11 era. The president has decided to shift our priorities finally towards the priorities of the century ahead, towards competitiveness, towards investing in ourselves instead of investing in war, uh, towards achieving uh, goals that benefit all Americans as opposed to having unachievable goals like the goals that were set for this war a long, long time ago. Uh, and I think that when we do have the benefit of history, we're going to realize that this was the right thing to do, it's too late. You know, the right time to leave Afghanistan was a dozen years ago, may have been 15 years ago, it could have been 10 years ago or eight years ago. Uh, we, sh we shouldn't be leaving now, but it's a good thing that we are, and it's a good thing that this president has had the courage to take this on, because I know that he knew that it was gonna be uh, a traumatic experience for all involved. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of the criticism uh, against the president has been that the, what's happening in Kabul right now is only going to make America weaker. And you have an incredible paragraph in that Daily Beast column that I want to read for everyone. You write, the Biden team view is based on the idea that becoming bogged down in a 20-year war with an unclear mission that drained our resources and distracted us from our priorities made us weaker, that entering Iraq without justification made us weaker. That retreat in the wake of the calamities of Bush farm, uh, uh, Bush farm policy made us weaker. That Trump attacking our alliances and undermining the rule of law at home made us weaker. The gross failure of leadership in managing COVID made us weaker. A president inciting an attempted coup made us much, much weaker. Well, th that's the case, you know, and I understand why people say this has damaged our standing. But if they think this is the thing that has damaged our standing most, they're just not paying attention or they're not being honest with themselves. The Trump years were a litany of uh, um, self-inflicted wounds uh, from the president, whether he was blowing up alliances or he was undermining our status as a democracy in the world. Staying in this war a long time, the illegal wrong war in Iraq, uh, Guantanamo. We, we could make a long, long list of things that have happened in the past 20 years that have damaged us grievously. Getting out of Afghanistan, moving forward, putting those things behind us is actually the only possible first step toward healing.
You know, David, um, th there's something the president said at, um, in the East Room today. We don't have time to play it, but I want to get your reaction to what he said when he was asked. He said, what interest do we have in Afghanistan at this point with al-Qaeda gone? We went to Afghanistan, Afghanistan with the express purpose of getting rid of al-Qaeda in Afghanistan, as well as getting Osama bin Laden, and we did. To those people who say, um, yeah, al-Qaeda is gone now, but once the United States leaves, it's going to come back and the situation's only going to get worse. Are those people not being, re are, are they not realistic? Look, I think it's naturally, it's a natural thing to fear al-Qaeda will return. I think al-Qaeda will return to some degree. We have enormous capabilities, again, as the president has said, to identify those threats and to respond to those threats. It doesn't take a permanent military presence on the ground uh, to go after those who are uh, res you know, responsible for a threat against the United States. We have manifold over-the-horizon technologies uh, strong uh, intelligence resources. And I think it's important to remember that we went into Afghanistan to get Osama bin Laden, and he ended up being in Pakistan. And we ended up having to go into there to get him. So we will protect ourselves. There's no question about that. But we do ourselves a lot of damage if we ignore other threats, whether those threats are domestic extremists who pose a much greater threat at the moment uh, than foreign extremists or what, right. climate change, uh, or the rise of other great powers like China. And I think the president is saying we have to prioritize threats and we have to prepare for all of them. And we shouldn't put all our chips in one battle as we have done in the greater Middle East for 20 years now. 